Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. Beaver Builder and Elementor are the two most popular and frequently recommended page builders in the WordPress ecosystem. For years, they were locked in a page builder war for the hearts and minds of site builders. In April 2018, the stats were so compelling that I called it. Elementor had won a decisive victory. The war was over. In this screencast, I want to look at what has changed since then, why the change matters, and offer some recommendations. To start, I want to look at Beaver Builder and Elementor then, 18 months ago, and now. There have been some big changes in the comparison statistics that are worth noticing. Both page builders use a freemium model where there is a free version in the WordPress.org plugin directory, an advanced professional version for a fee that has more features. Looking at the free version on WordPress.org, we see that in 2018, Beaver Builder had about 400,000 active installs. The free version had six widgets, and there were approximately 42 free add-ons. In 2019, Beaver Builder still has approximately 400,000 active installs. The free version still has six modules, and there are approximately 47 free add-ons. Elementor, back in 2018, had 700,000 active installs, 27 widgets, and approximately 63 free add-ons. In 2019, Elementor has more than 3 million active installs, the free version has 30 widgets, and there are over 200 free add-ons in the WordPress plugin directory. During the last 18 months, Beaver Builder has stayed the same, while Elementor has made huge gains. Elementor now has 4.2 times the number of active installs, and more than three times the number of free plugins available on WordPress.org as it did in April 2018. Comparing the premium versions, there's the same pattern. Between April 2018 and October 2019, Beaver Builder had a single point release from 2.1.x to 2.2.x. In that same time frame, Elementor had seven point releases from 2.0.x to 2.7.x. If we look at the premium versions, in 2018, Beaver Builder had 30 modules and 30 templates. In 2019, Beaver Builder had 30 modules and 30 templates. In 2018, Elementor had 30 widgets and 100 plus templates. And in 2019, Elementor had 90 widgets and 300 plus templates. Looking at the number of modules and templates, Again, Beaver Builder stayed the same. However, Elementor has three times the number of modules and three times the number of pre-designed templates as before. While it's imperfect, we can look at the Google search volume as a proxy for popularity. At a time when WordPress market share is quickly increasing, interest in Beaver Builder is flat, but interest in Elementor is rising. There's more to the comparison than just numbers. Beaver Builder has always been very stable. However, early on, Elementor had some stability problems when there were new releases. However, Elementor has solved that problem, and they're both very stable. When you look at the features, Beaver Builder has some features that Elementor does not. And here I'm talking about Beaver Builder plus Beaver Themer. For example, Elementor Pro has some limitations when creating archives for custom post types. Also, Elementor doesn't have conditional logic, and the agency version of Beaver Builder has a white label option, and Elementor Pro does not. Today, a number of Elementor add-ons fill in these gaps and solve these problems, but of course it's nice to have them built into core. When we look at Elementor features, Elementor has a pop-up maker, which is a full lead capture solution. And a major point of comparison are the styling and design options. A motion animation engine, hover effects, blend mode, element placement, 
and advanced background options, for example. Also, Elementor Now is releasing monthly template kits, which are full, professionally designed websites. When we look at third-party add-ons, there are now so many third-party add-ons for Elementor that it's impossible to keep track. It's not only something that established development shops have adopted, but it's also something of a cottage industry now. And this can be a problem area for Elementor, because while Elementor solved the stability problem, it seems like each of the vendors has to learn this lesson themselves. So it's important to choose your add-ons carefully. Fortunately, there are a number of established and respected vendors that offer solutions. When we look at the online community and the presence of the two companies, there's also a stark contrast. Beaver Builder has a strong and very friendly community, but it's small compared with the Elementor community. There are a handful of Beaver Builder Facebook groups with more than 100 to 200 members. There are more than 30 sizable Elementor Facebook groups. In terms of online training, the number of quality Elementor tutorials on YouTube is overwhelming. The Elementor team is actively engaging with its users with regular articles, blog posts, tutorials, and partner highlights. Elementor staff are daily engaged with users on Facebook. The Beaver Builder team is comparatively silent. In Elementor Facebook groups, Elementor actively promotes third-party vendor enhancements, promotes people making tutorials, and individual site builders and their designs. Their affiliate managers reach out to their affiliates. When it comes to code output, Beaver Builder has an advantage. It outputs less code and the page size is generally smaller and more optimized. All of the Elementor styling options come at a cost. The animations and effects require more HTML elements, CSS, and JavaScript. In terms of pricing, there's also been a change. Beaver Builder plus Beaver Themer for unlimited sites, lowest package, is $246 for the first year. Beaver Builder has a 40% discount on renewals, so that comes to $147.60 for subsequent years. Elementor Pro is $199 a year and no longer offers a renewal discount, although I think current subscribers who had it retain it. So now Beaver Builder is more expensive the first year and thereafter is cheaper. And this is an example where the current lack of competition has led to a higher price. Elementor felt they no longer needed to offer a renewal discount. In 2018, I concluded that Elementor had won the page builder war. So what's the news? For me, it's troubling that Beaver Builder development has stood comparatively still. That doesn't bone well for the life of the product or its third-party partners. It also isn't a good sign for site builders who need to keep current with site building and design trends. Does the Beaver Builder team think that their product is mature? That attitude is a death knell in the web design and site building space. Beaver Builder subscriptions may be holding steady or even increasing, but as WordPress is growing, their overall market share has to be going down. Clearly, some of Elementor's success is related to better marketing. However, beyond just marketing, there is much more engagement and vitality. The project feels like it is alive and current. People often ask whether they should use Beaver Builder or Elementor. I used to suggest they try both and see which one clicks for them. But now I can no longer recommend Beaver Builder for new users. For people who have established site building businesses using Beaver Builder, it makes sense to stick. It would be impractical to switch, and the Beaver Builder team is keeping the product current with WordPress, PHB changes, they're providing good support and fixing bugs. Many in that space, however, will want to start hedging their bets and considering other options. In the site building web design space, it is essential to keep up with the trends and learn new things. With most tools, there is an initial on-ramp effort needed to learn how things are done and work past the newbie frustrations. I suggest you set aside some time to explore alternatives to Beaver Builder and get up to speed with other tools. I know that this topic may be contentious and that people are invested and have strong opinions. For certain types of projects, the difference in features may recommend Beaver Builder over Elementor, but overall I think the trends support my recommendations. 
However, if you think I missed something on either side, please leave a comment and I can make corrections or additions. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Thank you for watching.